When Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union in 1941, Marina Raskova was angry. Obviously, she was angry her country had been invaded. But she was also angry at the bureaucracy of her country's government. Even though Raskova was an experienced pilot, they wouldn't let her fly in combat. Raskova would work tirelessly to change this. She made speeches. She wrote letters. She even went to the headquarters of the Soviet Air Force with a suitcase full of letters from women like her who wanted to fly and fight. And in late 1941, she won. The Soviet Air Force accepted female air crew for combat service. During World War II, about 1,000 Soviet women would fly for the Soviet Air Forces. Some would fly, fight, and die alongside men in regular Air Force units. Others would fly for three now legendary all or mostly female units. The most famous Soviet female air unit was the 588th Night Bomber Regiment. They flew dangerous night missions, bombing German soldiers in slow Po-2 biplanes. Their old airplanes made a rattling, whooshing noise as they flew, so German soldiers started calling them the Night Witches because their plane sounded like a witch's broom. And the name was apropos for another reason as well. Just like a witch's broom, the old, simple airplanes the Night Witches flew were made mostly of wood. And when the Germans spotted the Night Witches, they did everything they could to shoot them down. They even set up hidden anti-aircraft guns to ambush them. But the Night Witches kept flying and trying to outsmart the Germans. The airplanes they flew were so small there was only room for two people, a pilot and a navigator. And they had to work together as a team, picking their way through the dark skies with the help of nothing more than basic tools like maps, compasses, and flashlights. The harsh weather didn't make things easier. One pilot, Nadezhda Popova, remembered, when the wind was strong, it would toss the plane. In winter, when you'd look out to see your target better, you got frostbite. Our feet froze in our boots, but we carried on flying. When they got to the target, the night witches would employ risky tactics to get the job done. In some cases, two of the night witches' aircraft would intentionally draw the Germans' fire. As searchlights and tracer bullets filled the skies, another pilot would turn off her engine and glide in to bomb the target, hoping the Germans wouldn't hear her. And when she was done, they'd repeat the tactic until all three aircraft had finished their attacks. In other cases, they would line up behind each other and glide in silently one by one with their engines off, dropping flares that lit up the target, but also made it easier for German gunners to see them and shoot them down. And if a Night Witch got hit, there was little hope of escape. For most of the war, the Night Witches left their heavy parachutes behind so they could carry more bombs. Popova once returned to base with 42 bullet holes in her plane and several in her flight helmet and map. Each of the Night Witches would fly up to 18 daring missions a night, spending as many as seven hours in the cockpit. And they'd fly these missions night after night, one pilot, Arena Sabrova, flew 1,008 missions during the war, and several other night witches flew over 800 missions during their wartime career. Together, the night witches completed nearly 24,000 missions during the war. 23 of them would earn the Soviet Union's highest medal, but sadly, five would be killed before they got their rewards. But although the Night Witches are the most famous female Soviet air unit, they weren't the only one. If you'd like to learn more about Soviet female fighter pilots and dive bomber pilots, check out the next episode in this series.